kids pastor, kids leader, and kids volunteer. I want to encourage you today with the fact that the anointing starts at the head. You have nothing to fear. And the kids that you've been given to steward, they are going to be impacted by the word when you decide I'm going to be in the order of God. My name is Faith Shropshire, and I want to just share with you some tips that I've learned being in kids ministry like almost all of my life. This is Faith Like Us Podcast Leaders Edition. Walking by faith like ooh, walking with God like ooh, don't you want to kids, ministry, pastors, leaders, and volunteers. I'm so excited to be with you and share with you on this topic of anointing comes from the head. Now, what does that even mean? I want to encourage you as a part of the kids ministry, do not isolate yourself from the rest of the ministry that happens in the house that you're called to. Listen, if you're in a church and you're not able to submit to the senior pastor, then you need to find yourself somewhere else or you need to get submitted. Because the bottom line is there cannot be schisms and divisions in the house. Otherwise, the blessing will not be commanded. Let me read you a verse. It's in Psalms 133, one. It says this, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Paul addressed this issue in 1 Corinthians eleven eighteen. 18. He was addressing the church at Corinth. And he said this, he said, for first of all, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you. And in part, I believe it. Well, what was Paul talking about? Now, he could have been referencing maybe just divisions among some of the the people in the church, you know, the people that attended the church. But I want to address any division or schisms among kids, pastors, leaders and volunteers and the head or the senior pastor. Guys, here's the thing. As kids pastors, your job is weighty. As kids volunteers, kids leaders, your job is weighty. And if you've been given a part of the vision of that house, did you hear me? It's just a part, a part of the vision of that house. It's an important part. Okay. I'm kids pastor. I think that the kids ministry is like the heart. Okay. Like it's a major part of the body of Christ. I don't, I haven't got confirmation from that, from the word or like from the father but I really enjoy kids ministry and I know it's a big deal. But here's the thing, like kids ministry is great, but when there's division between kids ministry and then what's actually happening in the service, with the head pastor, the senior pastor, that there's never going to be a blessing. There's always going to be like, it's like you're hitting a brick wall. You can try every curriculum known to man, orange, blue, green, red, yellow. Do you, you can try everything, but if there's division, there's not going to be a flow. Anointing starts from the head and flows down to the rest of the body. And God brought you to that house for such a time as this. If you are in in that house and you've been given a piece to steward, which is called the kids ministry, maybe even just nursery, maybe you're just a nursery volunteer, but you've been given a piece of the vision that God gave your senior pastors. That is such a big deal. And you want to make sure that you steward that with honor and realize that your part isn't a part outside of the head. Look what it says in Psalms 133, two, I'm backtracking. Obviously I read Psalms 30, 131, one, but then we're going down to Psalms 133, two. It says this, it's like the precious oil upon the head. Well, what is the oil? The oil is a symbol of the anointing. And whenever, um, you know, the prophet Samuel, he anointed David, he anointed Saul. Whenever Aaron was anointed, the anointing oil would pour from the head and then down the rest of the body. They would be like doused in it. I know um, Bishop Dag Haywood, he was recently um, at a church and he was anointing people with oil and it was like they were drenched and it was like awesome. Like it was so, so special. Like the anointing was so thick, even just watching it through YouTube. But it's like, that's where it starts. The anointing starts at the head. See, the senior pastors are the ones that received the vision to start the church or they've they've been placed, whatever your denomination is, however it works, they're the head. 
They're the head of that church. An anointing starts at the head and then it flows down into the rest of the body. And so if you've been called there as a kid's pastor, as a kid's leader, or even a kid's volunteer, you have to know that you're a part of that vision and you have that anointing to flow and to do what God's called you to do in that ministry. But your ministry cannot be separate from the head. You know, if if the pastor is, is talking about the importance of walking in love or the importance of giving, you don't want to, in kids' church, talk about how it's not that big of a deal. Do you understand? Now that's kind of like an extreme case, but like you want to make sure that you're in line, you're in unity with the head. Like you want to make sure that the senior pastor's heart for the adults, for the youth, for the young adults, for the kids. Like that's what you're giving to the people. Not, well, I think that this would be great. I think that this would be awesome. You know, Pastor Dean and Pastor Kathy at my church, Choose Life Church, where I serve as kids pastor, like they're my parents, yo. Okay, but I'm not like, you know, mom, dad, I feel like I should do this. I think that this would be great in kids church. Everything that I do, I I present it to them first, asking them like, hey, does this bear witness with you? Like, is this, does this flow with the vision of this house? I'm not gonna do my own thing even though I'm literally flesh and blood. Okay, like they're my mom and dad, but that doesn't matter. Okay, like mom and dad, that's not how it goes in heaven. I'm not standing before God and giving an account and and they're my mom and dad. Do you understand? It's just me and him up there. And so I want to make sure that I'm stewarding the part that I've been given as kids pastor. And you want to do the same as kids pastor, kids leader, kids volunteer. Like, hey, is this flowing with the anointing from the head? Is this flowing with the vision? And listen, if you have a problem, problem with the vision from the head, then you need to find a new head because you're just going to make yourself a goat and y'all or a wolf. I mean, I feel like goats just buck. You know what I mean? Just constantly bucking. Well, they should do it this way. They need to do it that way. Go start your own. Okay. Now you're going to hear the PK coming out. If you think your senior pastor should do something a different way, then you need to go start your own thing. But here's the thing. If you're complaining about it, you know you don't have the nuts to start your own thing. You would just rather complain. And guess what? The blessing is not going to flow in your life personally or in that kid's ministry. You're going to find yourself like constantly like struggle bussing. For what? Because there's no unity. I want to encourage you, kids pastor, kids leader, kids volunteer, anointing flows from the head. And guess what kids ministry is not? It's not the head. You're right. You answer correctly. Ding, ding, ding. You're the winner. Kids ministry is not the head. Okay. It flows from the senior pastors down. So I want to encourage you, get in line with the vision of the house. Well, I don't know the vision of the house. Well, get in line with the vision of the house. Find out what is the vision of this house? Because I want the kids to know the vision of this house so that they move from kids church to youth and then to adults. And there's a supernatural flow. It's like they're getting the vision as a second grader. And then they're getting the vision when they grow up as an eighth grader. They're getting the vision as a 12th grader. And then they're getting the vision as a young adult and adult. And then they're able to flow and be a part of the body that God has called them to be. Kids minister, you have a lot to do with that. You do not want to create schisms and disunity. You don't want to create strife. You want to get in line with the vision of the house. What is the vision of the house? Teaching the truth, setting the captives free, making disciples, right? Find out whatever the vision of the house is and then begin to say, that is our vision as a kid's ministry. That is our vision in toddlers. That is our vision in preschool. Man, that's our vision in nursery. We're proclaiming over these kids that they're soul winners. You know, if the vision of the house is is primarily like souls or missions, whatever it is, if you you're there, you know I've been called here. Get your funky, flaky flesh out of the way. Stop allowing bitterness, offense, and divisions. Get your flesh in line and say, This is the house that I know God has called me to. It doesn't matter if I would do something different. I don't have an opinion that matters. You know why? Now, if there's, um, I please hear me. Like, if there's, um, 
carnality, sin, you need to find a house where you can honor and respect the leadership. Do you understand? I'm not saying get in submission when the pastor's out gambling all of the money away. I'm not saying that or out like, you know, drunk texting people. I'm not saying you need to stay in that house. No, you better get somewhere where you can submit, where the leaders are submitted to the word of God. And then you in turn are submitted and then bringing up these kids in a way that flows with the anointing of that house. And you start, you just begin to say, okay, the vision of this house is to reach the lost and to raise up disciples. And so even in nursery, you begin to confess. If you're a volunteer in nursery, you begin to confess over these kids. I thank you, Father God, that so-and-so is a soul winner, that so-and-so grows in the knowledge, right? You begin to make confessions. Why? Because anointing comes from the head. And when you get in line, there's a supernatural flow. I mean, haven't you experienced that like as an adult or a young adult, whatever age you are, when your head isn't right, yo, it's like everything goes wrong. Do you know what I mean? Like there's no flow. You stumble over your words. Like whenever your thinking isn't right, when your head, when you're not in a good head space, like things just don't go good. You eat stuff that you normally wouldn't eat. You talk about things. You know, you can find yourself just being carnal when your head isn't right. Well, whenever you are a kid's pastor, kid's minister, kid's leader, kid's volunteer, and you are not submitted to the vision of the house, man, your head's not right and things are not gonna flow. And remember, the Bible says, Jesus told Peter, my lambs need to be fed. So we can't afford to be in disunity. We can't afford to be like this church at Corinth where he said, I hear that there are divisions among you. There's not gonna be divisions among us, among other church volunteers, among other kids' church volunteers. We're not gonna have divisions. If something needs to be confronted and talked about, we're gonna talk about it, but we're gonna make sure that we are in unity. Kids pastor, kids minister, kids leader, kids volunteer, listen, do not allow the enemy to punk you into being offended. Do not allow the enemy to punk you in to being bitter and angry and just allowing yourself to even think those thoughts like, well, I would do it this way. I would do it this way. I think that they should do that. If you have such great like ideas, go start your own thing. Do you understand? Like go start your own thing. But I'm, I wanna warn you, if God didn't tell you to start your own thing, it's gonna crash and burn. And so if he's called you to this place, wherever you are, to be submitted to the senior pastor that you are under, then I wanna encourage you, please know that the order of God is the anointing starts at the head. You may think, well, I can preach better, or you know, I've got a better flow, you know, I can flow in the spirit better. You may think a lot of things, but guess what? You better take all those thoughts captive because they are not from the Holy Spirit, okay? The Holy Spirit doesn't create division between you and the head, okay? I'm so glad today when I woke up, whenever I was telling my body, hello, and I was telling my body, get your butt out of bed. I'm so glad my leg did not tell my head, no, I'm not moving. No, I'm not moving. And then me still just stay in bed. No, my head overrided everything else. Do you understand? I'm just so glad that my leg knew, hey, you have no opinion here, bro. Like this is what we're doing. We're getting up. And so we're going to get up. You want to make sure that you're not just throwing a around your opinions. You're getting in line with the vision of the house in kids ministry. You are a special part. My opinion, again, the most valuable part. Hello, right? We are a valuable part of the body of the church, but anointing flows from the head. So get in line. You know what I mean? Get in the order of God and just begin to see your kids ministry expand and grow. Why? Because where there is unity, he commands the blessing. And I declare by faith that your kids ministry is blessed. It's going to another level. Even as you begin to make tweaks in your thinking and, and the way you do things and the way you're flowing, when you begin to line up with the vision of the house, there's going to be such a blessing, not just in kids ministry, but for you personally in your finances finances in your relationships. Why? Because where there's unity, he commands the blessing. So kids pastor, kids leader, kids volunteer, continue doing what you know to do. Get in unity with the vision of the house. Anointing comes from the head. And listen, you are anointed for kids ministry. I love you. I'll see you next time. Walking by faith like
Walking with God.